Now here's something that needs our immediate attention. Our rivers, seas and lakes are fighting what seems like a losing battle against sewage and other contaminants. Polluted water bodies are a testimony to our carelessness. But one innovation could literally change the face of these water bodies. Take a look. Bengaluru, once dubbed as city of lakes, now has most of them covered in weed and polluted with sewage. Killing not only the urban landscape and the lake ecology, but also fishermen's livelihood. But even as the world debates on how to clean our rivers and lakes, there's an innovation whose impact is trickling its way across the world. This particular lake, this is Madiwala Lake, this is about two acres size. It is partially treated. That means that uh, uh, the sewage is still coming in. The fishermen are uh, doing fishing here, plenty of fishes they are getting. And uh, there is a partial treatment. Whenever the oxygen level dips, they add our product new algae into the water mm -hmm. to get the oxygen back. And then they do uh, fishing. Uh, the, the government are not treating it, only the fishermen are treating it. The product helps the diatome algae grow in any water body. Diatome algae are unicellular and are the producers in a food chain. But the chain reaction leads to something more. The diatoms, they produce uh, the dissolved oxygen, increase the percentage of oxygen in that, and that helps aerobic bacteria break down the organics. And the fishes do the entire cleaning. The zooplankton will consume the entire organics. This is in turn consumed by the fishes. So you can remove the entire organic biomass as a fish biomass. Mm -hmm. Totally you can remove it from the system. Watch how new algae is on a quest for zero water pollution on the power of Shunya this weekend. Rivers are our lifelines providing us with fresh water but due to untreated sewage and industrial waste almost half of our 445 rivers are unfit for drinking. Water pollution is not only diminishing our fresh water sources but is also adversely affecting the marine life which in turn is affecting the livelihood of many fishermen. T. Sampath Kumar is one extraordinary Indian who took on the challenge of reversing this damage. His Nualgi technology has the potential of cleaning up the pollution in our rivers and oceans, making them safer, cleaner and fit for the marine life. This invention truly has the capacity to turn back time and take us back to zero water pollution. Sparkling, gurgling, gushing waters of many of our rivers is a sight to behold. Traversing several hundred kilometers, the waters find solace in the vast seas and oceans. But on this journey, they often mingle with a host of pollutants like sewage and garbage. Other water bodies like lakes share the same fate. Bengaluru, once dubbed as the city of lakes, now has most of them covered in weed and polluted with sewage, killing not only the urban landscape and the lake ecology, but also fishermen's livelihood. Lake Gali Jagudre, main Mariala Satok, the la, oxygen is Sigodila. Akanadali, Gali Jagan and Tundrene. But even as the world debates on how to clean our rivers and lakes, there's an innovation whose impact is trickling its way across the world. This particular lake, this is Madiwala Lake, this is about two acres size. It is partially treated. That means that uh, uh, 
the sewage is still coming in. The fishermen are uh, doing fishing here. Plenty of fishes they are getting. And uh, there is a partial treatment. Whenever the oxygen level dips, they add our product new algae into the water to get the oxygen back. And then they do uh, fishing. Uh, the, the government are not treating it. Only the fishermen are treating it. Restoring balance to the marine ecology is chartered accountant T. Sampat Kumar's new algae nanosilica, a product born out of his own curiosity. Way back in the 1990s, I was interested, I had a prawn hatchery near Mahabalipuram. At that time I wanted to, I was wondering how the marine fishes, they get their food. I wanted to develop the marine food chain so that I can grow the food wherever they wanted. I did a lot of reading. I found that one particular algae called diatom algae produced more than 50% of the marine food. The product helps the diatom algae grow in any water body. Diatom algae are unicellular and are the producers in a food chain. But the chain reaction leads to something more. A plant requires about 13 nutrients to grow uh, what we have done is, we have a nano silica base. On the nano silica base, we have absorbed all the micronutrients required for the plant growth in a certain proportion that is suitable for the diatom growth. Once we have done that formulation, and that one when you add to any water body, the spores are already there in the particular water body. The spores get activated, they start, they bloom into a diatom algae, and they do, uh, they absorb water, they produce, they absorb carbon dioxide, and they pr uh, produce oxygen and produce food under the water. So that way that uh, marine food chain is started off. The food is consumed by zooplankton, zooplankton is consumed by fishes. The oxygen in the water helps aerobic bacteria break down the uh, um, pollution organic load in the system and everything else consumed by the, ultimately by the fishes. New algae is a micronutrient food which when dissolved in water starts showing results within the first few minutes. ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಜೀವರಾಶಿಗಳು ಕೆರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವಂತ ಜೀವ ರಾಶಿಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಉಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಕ್ಕಪಕ್ಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಜನಗಳು ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಜನಗಳಿಗೆ ಅನನುಕೂಲ ಆಗದಿರಂಗೆ ನಾವು ಕೆರೆನ ಎಲ್ಲ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲೂ ಕಾಪಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಆಗಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾವ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಲೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ವಾಟರ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಆಲ್ಗಿ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಜೀರೋ ವಾಟರ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ In an effluent treatment plant, you have aerators, a lot of power is required and you have to make the oxygen in the air dissolve in the water for the oxygen to help aerobic bacteria break down the organic. In our system, it is very, very simple. The plant body that is growing under the water produces pure oxygen under water and you don't need such kind of investment. Very large investment is not required and any capacity we can handle depending on the volume, we can add that much product into the water. Ultimately, even those that sludge and uh, uh, whatever organics are remaining at the bottom of the lakes and rivers and places, everything will get cleaned up, all of them will get oxygenated, aerobic bacteria will break down all that and ultimately entire pollution can be completely removed from the face of the earth, definitely you can have a zero pollution. Until now, India and much of the world have operated within a familiar philosophy, grow now, clean up the mess later. But if we are going to have the great future we are capable of, that philosophy simply won't work. So it's time to grow efficiently, sustainably and responsibly. Today we saw a few impressive innovators who are tackling the problem head on. In our quest for zero, these exciting people are using brilliant science and technology to bring us that much closer to zero emissions and zero pollutions. Until next week, it's me Anupam Kher saying goodbye.